Howdy again, it's me, and it's been a while since I've tested a Canon lens. I've had a ton of requests to cover this one, their first EFM lens in a long time, the new 32mm f1.4 STM. It's only for Canon's mirrorless EOS M system cameras with their APS-C sensors. It costs about 480 US dollars, but 500 pounds in the UK. Brutal. Someone get me a ticket to New York. I mostly shoot on my Sony a7R2 camera these days, but I definitely have a little soft spot for Canon's EOS M system. The cameras and lenses are so lovely and small, and I personally think the system has potential. Canon's commitment to it though has been shaky at best, so it's delightful to finally see a very bright aperture autofocus lens from them here. That focal length of 32mm is the full frame equivalent of 51mm, so it's a nice standard field of view you're getting here, wide enough to get a bigger picture, but tight enough to give you a little emphasis on your subject. And that lovely maximum aperture of f1.4 lets you shoot in low light conditions and, more interestingly, get lovely out of focus backgrounds. Some people have tried to describe this as a portrait lens, but at this focal length you wouldn't really want to get too close to your subject in case you distort his or her features. But it's certainly a perfect lens for street photography, especially in the dark, at Christmas time. It's a useful lens for just about anything, frankly. Bear in mind that this lens does not have image stabilization, so video makers will want to use it with a tripod or an electronic gimbal. Let's look at build quality first. The lens is fairly small and is made of a combination of gunmetal grey plastics and metal, with a classy but somewhat reserved look to its design. It weighs 240 grams and feels really nice and solid, and it's a dead simple lens too. Its only controls are a focus limiter switch and the big plastic focus ring. If you turn it slowly, then it works smoothly and works responsively with the focus motor, but if you turn it too quickly, it won't respond with the motor at all, so take it easy when you're manually focusing. When shooting in stills mode, the autofocus system is nice and quick. In video mode, on my Canon EOS M3, which is admittedly an older camera these days, it was a lot slower and pretty unsure of itself. On a newer EOS M camera with dual pixel autofocus, I imagine a video autofocus should be faster and much more positive. It does make a quiet buzzing noise as it goes though, which will be picked up by your camera's internal microphone. A lens hood is available to buy separately for an eye-watering £30, and the filter size for the front of the lens is a very small 43mm. Overall, the build quality is very quote-unquote middle of the range, but that's not a bad thing. It's very solid and simple, and it works well. Alright then, image quality. I'm testing it here on my 24 megapixel Canon EOS M3 with in-camera corrections turned on. At f1.4, the picture quality in the middle is very sharp with good contrast. The corners are, well not quite as good but still impressively sharp for any camera lens at f1.4. Stop down to f2 and those corners sharpen up even further. There's no further improvement at f2.8, but stop down to f4, and the lens is now pin sharp across the entire image frame, and it stays this sharp even down to f8. It's only when you stop down as far as f11 that you begin to see a little softness creeping in from the effects of diffraction. But overall, this is easily the sharpest of Canon's EFM lenses currently available, and by any means, one of the sharpest APS-C lenses I've ever tested. It's pretty much 10 out of 10 here. Ok, let's look at distortion and vignetting. The lens projects some gentle barrel distortion. Vignetting is a little high at f1.4 if you're not shooting with in-camera corrections, as you'd expect. Stop down to f2 though, and the corners brighten up pretty well. The lens can focus down to about 15cm, that's actually really close for a fast standard prime lens, pretty impressive. 
At f1.4, image quality is slightly soft at the closest distance, but contrast remains good. At f2, there's more sharpness, and that's about as sharp as the close-up images can get actually, even if you stop down further. Now, let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. The lens's strong optical performance so far takes a bit of a nosedive here. When very bright lights are directly in a frame, we see tons of flaring. At least it only happens when bright lights are directly in a picture, and not just outside of it. Finally, Bokeh. Canon had to get this right, considering that out-of-focus backgrounds are one of this lens's main selling points, and happily, it seems like they did. The out-of-focus backgrounds in my test pictures always looked nice and soft. There's something about their plain but soft quality which I'm oddly drawn into. And related to Bokeh, this lens doesn't seem to have much trouble with longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.4 you can see a little pink in the foreground highlights, and green in the background, but stop down to f2 and it's largely gone. Overall, I'm pleased to say that the Canon EFM 32mm f1.4 STM is frankly a no-brainer for EOS M camera owners, a bit like the 22mm f2 lens really, only even better. Everything about it is delightful, its build quality, its biting sharpness and good colours and contrast, the nice barker and close minimum focus distance, it's all great. £500 is a lot of money for any APS-C prime lens these days, but this lens's performance and overall neatness, usefulness and desirability justifies its price tag, I think, and so it comes highly recommended.